Hi there, it's Sandra from the Schwalben's Nest. Welcome to my channel. Today I've got a bunch of farmhouse home decor DIYs for you. If you've been following me on my channel, you know that is the style that I truly love. And if you've clicked on it, then you must love it too. So I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to take this jug from my Dollarama store and I'm going to give it a couple of coats, just the top half with some DIY chalk paint. Now this wasn't the original plan for this item. I was hoping I'd be able to get that printing off, but I was not able to do that. So that's why it's getting the paint. I've seen a lot of decor items that are popular right now that have the look of wood. So that's what I'm trying to do with this. So I've taken some of my walnut gel stain and this is just an Americana gel stain. You can find it at craft stores and dollar stores. And what I'm doing is taking my round chippy brush and just dragging it across, giving it a dry brushed look. I'm going to continue doing this until I get the depth of color that I want. I want a little bit of that white to show through, but I really want it to look like a carved piece of wood. I also made sure to get the top part of the pitcher or jug or vase or whatever you want to call this thing so it would look the same as well. Once the gel stain was completely dry, I let it sit for a couple of hours. I put some masking tape on and decided that I wanted to paint the bottom half completely white. I really love the two-tone look. The first coat that I put on, I used horizontal brush strokes. And the second coat, which I'm doing now, I'm doing vertical brush strokes. And this kind of paint technique ensures that you get full coverage. It fills in all of the brush strokes and cracks and crevices and anywhere you need to get really really well and you get a nice solid coverage. I'm just going to continue doing this with these really soft slow strokes just to make sure that I cover everything that needs to get covered. I really love how this turned out. I think it's going to be absolutely gorgeous with a little bit of greenery stuck in it sitting on a shelf or a mantle. Today's video is in collaboration with Dana over at Delighted to DIY and we're both doing some farmhouse decor for you. Dana is a new channel just starting out. She has 435 subscribers and I wanted to help give her a bit of a boost. So I'm looking to you guys to go over to Dana's channel, watch her videos, especially the one that she's got out for our collab today, which will be linked down in my description box and give her some love, hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up, and tell her I sent you. My second project for you today is using this thrifted candle holder, I think. I don't really know what it is, but I think it's meant for a candle and it's wire and it's this beautiful green color. I love the color, but it is missing one of the pegs. So I want to camouflage that a little bit. So I'm using some of this white cotton rope from Dollarama and I'm going to start weaving it in and out at the bottom and go up about four or five rows just to give this a little bit more of an interesting texture. I'm starting off by hot gluing the rope where that broken piece of wire is and then I'm going to weave in and out all the way around in a circle and glue it every once in a while mostly when I get back to the center I'm going to do that again and I'll do this like I said about four or five rows until I like the look of it. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel I would love for you to. Here's where I thought I would add some of the rope in the center a little bit, but I really didn't like how it was working out because the wire sections were farther apart, so it didn't look nice and tight like it did down at the bottom. So I ended up just pulling this out and skipping it. Now I need to cover up the broken piece at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and start at the very top just winding some of this cotton rope all the way around. And then I'm gonna go down about three inches and then tuck in the last little piece and glue it in place. 
here you can see what I mean about going down a few inches. I'm just gluing probably a couple of times on the rope each time I spin it around. And I just wanna make sure that I cover that broken piece. I love using these little birds and tiny little creatures in my farmhouse design. So I found this little bird. He was part of a wind chime set. So that's why he's got all these little holes. I'm just using some of this dry deck spackle. And this is my absolute favorite to use. It's the one that is pink and then dries white. But the other thing I really love about this is you don't have to really sand it, especially on a something like this which is ceramic I just actually took my finger and rubbed it all off nice and smooth and I wanted texture on this little bird so I didn't mind if there was a little bit of a bumpiness to it I gave my little bird a couple of coats of white chalk paint and now I'm going to mix up a green wax to go on top of it. The first color is Antique Sky from Martha Stewart chalk paint and that's already in the bowl. And now I'm just adding a little bit of the eucalyptus which is the darker green shade. I have a bottle of Folk Art Home Decor Clear Wax and I'm going to add some of that right into my bowl and mix it together ensuring that it's all blended together nicely. And if I need to add any more color, I can do that as well. So here's my little white birdie. I'm going to use a really soft brush to apply the wax, making sure I get it really heavy in, not super heavy, but heavy enough in all of the cracks and crevices. Once I have it the way I want it to look, I'm going to take a baby wipe and just gently dab at the raised areas to bring out some more of the white and the green will stay in all of the cracks. The last thing to do is use a lot of hot glue right on the very top and put the bird down so he has a cute little perch on top of this lantern. The last project I have for you today is using this spindle that came from a bed that was at the side of the road. And this round wood disc is from Michaels. I can't find any of the ones that they have at the Dollar Tree. My Dollar Trees don't seem to carry a lot of wood crafts. So I went to Michaels and I found these for $1.50, which is only 25 cents more than I would have to pay at the Dollar Tree since in Canada you pay $1.25 and sometimes $1.50 for items at the Dollar Tree. I'm using the gel stains again, but this time I've blended maple and walnut together because this original spindle has a bit of a reddish tone to it and I wanted to try and match up the wood round as best that I could. So I'm just putting it on with an old piece of t-shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry for a little bit and then I'll add a second coat to darken it up a little bit more. While I wait for this stain to fully dry, I'm taking this tin bucket. Now this is something I've had in my stash for a really long time. I honestly don't even remember where I got it from, but I'm taking it out to my garage and I'm gonna give it a couple of coats of flat white spray paint. Now my disc is dry, so what I'm gonna do is apply the glue to it. I'm going to use my Weld Bond glue, a really nice amount on the outside, and then I'll use some hot glue on the inside to make sure that it stays secure while I continue to work with it. I'm also going to add a bead of the Weld Bond glue all the way around because I wanna make sure that this stays really secure. It's a gift for my neighbor. She's the one who had the bed and put it out at the curb because it was broken in a couple of spots. I found out that it was her great grandmother's bed and decided that I needed to give her something as a reminder of the bed. She's an avid gardener, so I thought making a nice little pedestal pot might be the perfect gift.
I'm drilling a hole that is the same size as the screw I'm going to be using in the middle of the spindle and I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom of the pot. I don't want to use just glue to put these two together although I am going to use a bit of hot glue to just help secure it a little bit better so it doesn't wiggle but I decided that I wanted to put a screw down the center of the pot and into the spindle. And now comes the tricky part, being able to see that screw hole in the little screw hole of the pot. I did get it a little off center, but I was able to find, there it is, there's the hole. And I was able to put the screw in just using my ratchet screwdriver. So what I did next was try to get some of that glue the same color and it really wasn't working out. So I'm taking some of this rusty wood filler. It's a rusty color, not rust itself. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and fill that in, wipe off any of the excess. And then once this is dry, I'll be able to sand down the excess again and give it a nice coat of stain. I used a baby wipe to go across the spindle and just pull off any of the extra wood filler that was there so I wouldn't have to worry about trying to sand that off. To add the final touch for this pot, since I don't know what type of decor they have in their home, I decided to keep it simple. I'm going to add some of this jute rope just in between those two ridges there so it'll have a nice little design and then I'll add a simple little shoestring bow with some jute twine. I love how this one turned out. I love the simplicity of it and my neighbor really loves it too. I've already given it to her and it's going to be a really sweet memory of her grandma. I hope you enjoyed my assortment of projects today from dollar store and thrifted items. Please make sure you go down to my description box and click on the link to Dana's video. Go check her out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button too. I'd like to say a big thank you to all of my subscribers and viewers for watching today. If you're new to my channel, stick around a while. Hit that subscribe button. That black arrow will show you exactly where to click. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.